Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and today I'm back here with a new hand history review for you guys. So today we're going to talk about making the big fold in poker at the micro stake specifically. Can you do it? Should you do it? And when? This hand was sent to me by Louis and he's got ace-queen offsuit on the button there as you guys can see. This hand was played in the iPoker network so let's jump right into it. All right, so there's two limps before us, and Louis correctly comes in there for a preflop raise. If you guys have been following my videos before, you've read my books, my blog posts, anything like that, you know that I'm a big fan of this. Always isolating, even with a much wider range than this. Not You don't have to have a huge hand like ace-queen. The sizing is good as well. I like making it 6x like it is right here instead of just making it you know, 16 cents or something, inviting the whole table to come along. So basically at this point, I'm totally on board with every decision that Louis has made in this hand. All right, so villain one calls in the small blind, villain two calls in the big blind, and villain three and four both get out of the way. Now, before I jump any further into the action here, go to the flop, I want to jump into the HUD data and the reads that Louis gave me on villain one. All right, so Louis told me this guy is playing a 26-17-2. Now, that's VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. If you guys don't know those are HUD stats that you can get on your screen. I'll include a link to the program I use, Poker Tracker, in the description below. But basically, when I see a guy with those kind of stats, that's definitely what I call an SLP or a semi loose passive player. I talk about that in Crushing the Micro Stakes. This is kind of a, uh, it's definitely a recreational player, but it's not one of these huge whales that's just losing a fortune that's, you know, in there with any two cards. It's a reasonable recreational player definitely plays a couple goofy hands but you know is not just a complete crazy crazy uh, wild fish like you'll you'll see sometimes so let's just keep that in mind villain one is going to be the main villain in the hand villain two doesn't play a significant role so i'm not going to jump into any reads on that person so let's go to the flop so flop obviously very very good for our hand here we smash it hard with top and bottom we're going to be last to act of course on the button so let's see what happens so villain one checks, villain two checks. So what should we be doing here? Well, I think, you know, you guys already know that I'm going to be, if you've watched anything I've put out before. By the way, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you aren't already, because I'm putting out brand new micro stake strategy videos like this all the time. But if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you already know that I'm betting here. I do not like slow playing, especially in a spot like this versus two recreational players, villain two at the stack size, probably a recreational player as well. I definitely like getting the money in because they're going to call with a wide range. They're going to call with the king jack, with the ace four, with the queen jack, all sorts of different hands like that. We want to be getting value from these hands. Louis agrees. He makes it 50 uh, euro cents. And I think that sizing is actually pretty good. A lot of times I'm harping in these videos to go bigger, bigger, bigger. He, he makes it about, what, two-thirds pot there. Um, I think it's fine in this situation because we just have such a strong hand. You know, I want ace-deuce to call. I want king-jack to call. I want queen-jack to call. And I think maybe if we bomb it 75 cents, maybe queen-jack makes a fold or something like that, or queen eight makes a fold, something like that. So I want to give all those hands an opportunity to continue on. So I do like the 50 euro cents here into 80 euro cents. So villain one does make the call. Villain two gets out of the way. Let's go to the turn. So the turn is uh, one of those uh, unfortunate cards that we all hate seeing, of course, because the jack now gives, you know, he's got any jack in his hand. He's got the Broadway straight. Um, so what happens here? Villain one checks what should we be doing in this spot here? Well, I hope you guys are mostly just checking behind here. It's just one of those spots where there's not really a huge point in making a bet here because, like I said, it's just so black or white. He's got the jack or he doesn't. You know, we might be able to get some thin value from an ace four or something like that. You know, oh, king jack beats us. By and large, I don't think, I think we're going to get that value on the river anyways. I don't think we're going to get both the turn and river versus like an ace four type hand versus any kind of reasonable thinking opponent. So I really do like Louis's decision. He does check. I just check back here and we'll get that value in on the river. So the river comes with our gin card, though, of course, because now we're beating the straight. We've got the full house, of course. So we're happy we're doing the uh, we're doing the big the, the happy dance. Villain one comes out, interestingly, though, for a large bet of around 80 percent of the pot. So what should we be doing here? Well, again, you don't need to study any advanced poker theory to understand that we should be raising, of course, with a full house on the river here. It's exactly what Louis does. He makes it a little over a double raise there, making it three euros to go. Strangely, villain one uh, shoves all in. So I don't think that uh, any 
player, whether they're a recreational player or regular, is ever going to be doing this with a straight. I think that a straight is just always going to just call. They're not going to ship in with a, a paired board like this. So I am putting him on something pretty strong here, but at the end of the day, we have a full house. And, you know, once again, if you guys follow my stuff at all, you know that I always harp. We do not fold full houses at the micros unless you're like 500 big blinds deep or something against a super knit. That's certainly not the case here. So Louie goes ahead and makes the call. I can't blame him. And once again, if you guys have watched my videos before, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, he's got the pocket kings because people don't send me winning hands. They send me losing hands. Guys, this is a gross cooler, obviously. Um, and as I always, always mention in these videos, all you really ever have to do in a situation like this is just reverse the hands and just ask yourself, if this guy's got the ace queen and we got the pocket kings here, is he ever going to get away versus us? Is he going to make some crazy fold on the river? You guys already know the answer to that. He's not going to make that fold. The you should never be folding a fold house for 100 big blinds starting stack. So it's just one of those just insane coolers. There's really nothing you can do. You know, we already saw the stats on this guy. He's not even a nit. He's one of these semi-loose passive players. So he's on the absolute top of his range with pocket kings. Decides to slow play them preflop, which is what recreational players do. Guys, sometimes the recreational players are just going to get these setups versus you. You're gonna get them versus them as well. We've gotta remember the shoe is always on the other foot in the future. Was there anything different that could have been done in this hand? No, absolutely not. I think it was played well pretty much at every single stage of the hand. So good job, Louie. It's just uh, one of those set coolers that we all face sometimes. With hands like this, honestly, the best thing you can do is just laugh it off and just move on. I mean, there's, there's just really nothing to say there's no other way you could have played this hand. I'll be interested in your guys' thoughts in the comments below. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of debate with this one, but you guys can let me know uh, if you would have played this a different way on the flop, turn, river, or preflop. So let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoy watching MicroStakes Poker videos like this, once again, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and also like the video as well. And lastly, if you want to know my complete strategy for beating low stakes games like this, Make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit of the Micros. That'll be the top link in the description below. And once again, that'll give you my complete strategy for how to crush these stakes. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com. Mm -hmm.